Today, I am so excited to have Thomas right here with us, and he is going to tell us about what he does. Um, how are you doing today? I'm good, Bonnie. Appreciate you uh, having me on. It is such a pleasure to have you with us. So I want to just go ahead and jump in and have you tell us about you. What do you do? Where do you live? Um, what, are you, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm in the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area, and what I do is I'm, I just do music. You know, I have several different radio stations. I do a little booking, a little artist promotion, pretty much anything involving music. Excellent. So what stations do you have? I have Killer Cowboy Radio. I have Orbit Trail Radio. I also have uh, Crazy Cowboy Radio. And I do a couple of shows on uh, Texas Homegirl Radio, so I'm all over the map. Wow, it sounds like you're very busy. So Absolutely. What inspired your passion for radio? Obviously, you're passionate about it. <laughs> well, you know, back, I've always had me heard music ever since I was knee-high to a grasshopper, but, you know, uh, listening to Bill Mack, at WBAP and the Midnight Cowboy radio show just kind of got me on that path. You know, I've always been a fan of music, but the traditional classic country music, and then, of course, migrating to the Texas Red Dirt, independent Americana scene, and I actually have a Midnight Rider, a Midnight Ride radio show which was actually inspired by the Midnight Cowboy. Oh, that's amazing. I love it. That That is so cool. So you're, you would say your inspiration started, I mean, just as a child, really. This has been yeah, about, your start. Oh, yeah. Ever since I was probably six, seven years old. Oh, I love that. I feel the same way. I'm with you. <laughs> so what did you do in a previous career? Actually, believe it or not, I worked on a golf course. What did I did, you I did uh, outside uh, maintenance and uh, was a uh, cart guy for, God, probably 10, 10 or 11 years. So what made you make that transition into radio? Just, had, just decide just to do it. I mean, I've always had passion for it and you know, I always loved being around it, so I figured, well, I might as well just see what I can do with it, make you, a go of it. You just jumped right in. I love that because oh, you yeah. know what? that's what you got to do because sometimes if you don't, you sit there and you wait and you wait and you say, well, one day when I have enough saved up, whenever, whenever something comes along, you always say, I'll wait till this. Jump in. I mean, exactly. now look, you've got numerous radio stations you are doing so many things and you love it oh absolutely i mean if you don't if you don't love it then i mean it becomes a job yeah so in a lot of ways i feel like it's not a job it's just something that i love to do more of a hobby now i used to do write for a magazine you know a music related magazine and that got me to where I was interviewing people like Bill Anderson, Garth Brooks, Sylvia, Ali Colleen, uh, just a who's who. Oh, wow. That's then, inspiring. So, I mean, I did that for a couple of years. You know, Brandy Jenkins, I was able to interview him before oh. he passed. Stoney, Tony I Canada. Oh, I opened for Stoney and uh, Brandon Jenkins as well. One of my friends used to play, play with Brandon Jenkins before he oh, passed. Oh, wow. Uh, did uh, John Carter Cash, uh, Bill Mack, actually. I got to interview him. Uh, just Zay Williams. I could go off forever. So. so what is it like then? Well, who has been your favorite interview that you've done? My favorite interview actually was Bill Mack. Just really? from, yes, just <laughs> from listening to him from the age of eight, you know, hearing his career 
from uh, being a songwriter, being in the uh, uh, winning a Grammy for uh, Blue that Leah and Rhymes cut. The actual story behind Blue, which was supposed to be written for uh, Patsy Cline, but <laughs> Pat, but Patsy had uh, died in the plane crash, and that song just kind of got pushed to the side until uh, Leah and Rhymes got a hold of it. Oh, wow. And now I got goosebumps. Oh, my yeah, God. You know, drink, he wrote uh, Drink His Champagne, which was cut by everybody in the world. But we all know George Strait's version. And then hearing his, uh, just hearing his stories about how he would interview people and, you know, how he would do a whole uh, overnight show and how those how those truck drivers all kind of migrated towards his show. So I would say that would probably be my favorite interview. Oh, that's incredible. I love it. Now, artist-wise, oh, Lord, would probably, believe it or not, Allie Colleen, who, uh, who's a new up-and-coming uh, artist and actually is the daughter of Garth Brooks. Oh, okay. But she don't, you know, she wants to make it on her own and you know, she's an independent artist. She's struggling just like the rest of them. Yeah. Out there trying to make it on her on her own than anything. So is there any uh, any time when you feel like mm, imposter syndrome where you feel like, do I really belong here? How oh, did yeah. I get here? All the time. How All the you, time. How do you get out of that? I just because I feel like even even if I feel like I I don't belong here, somebody will see what I'm doing and you know appreciate the fact that I'm trying to help the little man get I out love there. I so, love it. So I mean, there's always going to be that doubt. I think in you, you know, can you do more? Of course you can. Are you doing enough? Maybe, maybe not, but just got to go with it. Yeah. And then also, you know, just when you're doubting yourself, I guess when you think of the ultimate reason you're doing this, it takes away the doubt, right? Oh, yeah. Exactly, because I'm not in it for the money. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> shoot. I do good. I do good to uh, fix me a couple of uh, fried bologna sandwiches. <laughs> so those are really good. I actually ate oh, those yeah. a lot. <laughs> um, so, what does your typical day look like? Oh Lord, I mean, there's really never a typical day. You know, get up, check emails. You know, go right into the station. You know, try to make sure that everything's on the up and up. You know, always adding new music. You know, little no fact, I don't stream music. No? So, no. I mean, I don't believe in it. You know, if somebody works hard enough, and I always say, if you're a pain in the neck to me, then, yeah, I'm going to give you a shot. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. I mean, just because I may not like a song doesn't mean somebody else won't like it. So who am I just to say, eh, it's not really good enough so, for my stations? So are your stations streaming stations? Yes. Excellent. Every, Excellent. every last one of them. I mean, the terrestrial thing, I don't, I don't do the uh, terrestrial thing. Too much politics going on in that. I follow you. I'm not sure what the difference is, or I don't. Well, you know, with the internet, with the internet streaming stations, you have more creativity, more leadway. You can be a little out of left field, so to speak. Gotcha. As opposed to the FL terrestrial side, where you're kind of locked down as to what you play. You know, you have to follow a certain formula. Well, I follow you. 
you know, as opposed to, you know, the, you, oh, you're just playing mainstream stuff. Well, you know, with what I do, I can play a little mainstream. I could go from Hank Williams to yourself to Ozzy Osbourne if I wanted to. I love it. I mean, music's music. Oh, it is. There's different times for different styles. Exactly. You know? There's some that you really like. Me and the girls really love to get out and boogie, you know? And then there's others where it's like, you want a few steps. So what has been the most rewarding of what you're doing? Being, I have a lot, I have had the honor of spending several people for the first time or doing interviews with a set artist for the first time. So when they come to me, oh, thank, I heard your song, on my song on the radio. Thank you for giving me the chance. You know, that that's where it's really rewarding. Oh, yeah. I mean, because you're helping them in their career. And it's such a tough industry. And you're oh, just, definitely. You know, I see you're, I see you're very supportive. I see you on Facebook, very supportive in the community, trying to help artists. And that that's incredible. So thank you so much for what you do. I mean, you got to. I mean, without, without, if you don't give somebody a shot, you know, I kind of feel like they're spinning their wheels, so to speak. Yeah, definitely. Well, where do you get your motivation and inspiration from? Is it from, from the artist? That's what just keeps you going? Just from the music side, the creativity, you know, always wondering, well, what's coming out next? You know, Polly Lane, what's, what's she going to do next? Or, you know, a Kayla McIntyre or a Bray Bagwell or whoever. Yeah. Always the mystery of what's, what they're doing next. Because I don't like, I'm not one to, I love creativity. There's a lot of artists that I feel don't have the creativity. They just kind of go with the flow of the industry yeah you know like when artists come to me and say hey what should i what do you think about x song well yeah put it out i mean don't go with the typical you know it's winter time so you have to put out a winter type song or something to that effect yeah I mean, the, 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 I guess I'm kind of an outlaw when it comes to the typical formula. Because I feel like if an artist goes against the grain, then somebody's going to be like, whoa, where did that come from? Good point. I love it. I love it. So what's been the most challenging for you along this journey? Just building a reputation. And uh, try to not necessarily make a mark in the industry, but letting people know that I'm here to stay. Yeah, I love you know, it. And, and kind of getting people to see my viewpoint on why I do what I do. Yeah. And there's always different ways to do, to accomplish things. Well, sometimes, I mean, sometimes it's come back to bite me in the but but you know what does it so how did you overcome that like what was the instance when that happened oh good lord Were wait you? a minute cow but you know you know you just kind of kind of keep going with yeah. it you know even though you're always going to have some sort of feedback whether it's positive or negative you just can't let it get you down is there one artist that you feel that you've really helped grow in this field that you're so proud of? Like, or are there numerous or? I feel like there's numerous artists that in some way I've kind of helped. I mean, I'll give you an instance, you know, Taylor D. Yeah. Who we yeah. lost in March. You know, I was actually helping her promote her last single to radio. And we were working together to promote it. I was teaching the artist, you know, look, this is what you need to do. This is how it should be done. 
blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Because I feel like there's many different radio promoters that are just fantastic. But to me, an artist, once they dive into self-promoting, then they can understand what the radio promoter is actually going through. You know, because you're paying numerous amounts of money for something that's not guaranteed. Right. It is expensive, yes. I mean, a radio promoter can only do so much. True. But I feel like if the artist can learn the that side of the business and reach out to the radio stations themselves in addition to the promoter, then that just only advances themselves. So what advice would you give to an artist that's wanting, that's just going to do this on them, their self, themselves? It'll take a lot of hard work. Don't, 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 uh, you can't just send emails and just kind of sit back and hope and pray that it works. You have to really go out there. You have to bust your butt. You know, don't go. And I don't want to call out an artist, but, you know, if a certain artist sound you have, you know, don't, don't be, don't be a Bree Bagwell. Don't be a Creed Fisher. Don't be a whoever. Be yourself. Right. And always believe in your product. If you put a song out there and you put your heart and soul into it, because I can always tell, and anybody can tell if an artist is just putting a song out, just put a song out, if that makes sense. Gotcha. I don't know. I've, I've never, like, everything I put out, I put out for a reason. Like, it's right. got something, something to it, you know? Maybe it's an anniversary song and right. hey, we're near Valentine's day, you know, or it's a Christmas song. And so I do tend but to you know like, how these, you know, it. how these rookie, rookie artists, you know, all rush, 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 you know, let's put a song out to radio. And then they come back and they keep listening to it. And what the heck did I put that out there for? Oh, I can say that. I mean, I yeah. look back you know 10 years and I'm like oh my goodness you know and exactly so but you're growing I mean it's a gradual process you know you were constantly thriving and doing better and becoming you know better vocally a better writer a better right. you know musician everything exactly. so what would you want listeners to know about you and your path if they were to look at doing you know, maybe what you're doing, having their own radio station. I mean, would you recommend? Uh, and booking. What would you What would you say to someone that's interested in a career? Let's start with the radio side. You know, the radio side is fun. I mean, you get to meet a lot of people. You know, you you put out the music. You don't just play music that you like. You know, you think about, well, what would this person want to hear? What would this person want to hear? You kind of got to, it's kind of like when you're fixing a uh, pot of chili or something. You know, <laughs> you throw it in all of the directions. Don't be afraid to, you know, go out into left field, so to speak. Gotcha. Just kind of play, just kind of play around with it. It's almost like a puzzle. You're never going to be perfect. With the station, I'm I'm always constantly tweaking formats to that. to see what to see what fits. And there's some stations that I have that you know the formula fits perfect, but there's other stations that I'm still constantly tweaking. I mean, I think everything that you do, we strive for perfection, but we can't let it kill it to where we don't put it out or do anything with it. Exactly. And then keep just, tweaking as we move along, you know, and just. And it it's definitely a 24 7 job. Gotcha. I mean, I was, I was there, I was working Christmas Day. You can never really stop uh, with uh, what you're doing. 
Gotcha. And, and as far as the booking side, <laughs> it's a pain in the neck. <laughs> I tell you, I can relate to that too. <laughs> I mean, Looking for I myself. Mean, I mean, you really have to, if you get with the artist, you have to really build that rapport with the artist to know what they expect, then what you expect, then the venues, whatever venue it is, find you a venue, find you a little honey hole, so to speak. Get yourself comfortable with the booking, then expand out to bigger, better things. I mean, it's, it's definitely a, uh, it's always a work in progress and always be confident. Don't kind of stutter step and, uh, 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 because those video owners can tell and the artists can tell as well. You know, be yeah. confident in be what confident you're doing. In everything and you know do. that you're going to screw up. That's another thing. Because you're, you're going to screw up. It's just going to happen. But you can't let those screw ups, you know, affect you, affect your ability, affect your confidence. Yeah, true. Are there any other tips that you'd like to share with listeners? <laughs> just, just always believe if you got a passion, just go for it. Oh. I'm so happy. Thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing your experience and your story. And it's been awesome and inspiring. Well, I appreciate again uh, you having me and uh, being my uh, first interview. <laughs> yeah, I was so surprised. Your first interview. I mean, interview virgin, or I was. <laughs> So, but it was an honor and a uh, privilege to uh, be with you. Well, I am so honored. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. And uh, look forward to uh, talking to you again soon.